This is Christine Farley for Talk of the Trek, and today we're going to be discussing the basics of shoeing racehorses. This is my husband, TJ Farley, Howdy. who's in 20 years experience, and we're going to try to answer some of the basic questions. This morning, Bill asked us why horses need to be shod. Uh, horses in the wild obviously are not shod and have very healthy feet. However, what we're asking our horses to do through our performance venues is not natural. They're carrying a load of weight. We breed for confirmation attributes other than hoof soundness. So these horses need it for protection. And of course, in the racing industry, a major factor in shoeing the horses is traction. And today we're going to talk about some of the differences in shoes and shoe selection and some of the factors that go into that. Selecting shoes for a horse should be based on that individual horse, the horse's level of conditioning, any injuries or gait abnormalities, confirmation issues, and what track the horse is going to be running on. Several companies make racing plates, um, thoroughbred Kirkhart, several of the others. We actually prefer to use a shoe that's a little bit wider. This is a very popular shoe and has been for many, many years um, in racing. It's the thoroughbred racing plate, and you can see it's actually a little bit thinner than the other ones. The more support a horse has, the better performance, and he's going to stay sound for the long term. So that's a very, very important issue. Um, there's a lot of discussion about shoeing for the synthetic tracks. Most of the synthetic tracks have their own regulations regarding what you can shoe with. So that's going to be a big factor in your shoe selection. Um, they do make a shoe specifically. I don't have one here for the synthetic track any of them that have problems with too much traction, which is usually not an issue. Most of your synthetic tracks are going to require a flush or flat toe in the front and up to a two millimeter toe grab in the rear. Um, again, it's, it's very track dependent. And you all can see the two millimeter toe grab right here. That's a fast break, that's a square toe. Use that shoe for a lot of reasons if you need to increase angles pull toes back, and it's an XT fast break, same thing as a square toe. And when you have this tradition, Kirkcart's a blue bond shock absorber, a lot of tender footed, thin sold horses will use this shoe. And particularly, and they also make a blue bond that only, it's in the heels, because what hits the hardest is the heels. What hits first is the heels. Nine times out of your 10, all your soreness in a racehorse is gonna be on the rear end, back end of his foot to back third. So a lot of times when you're shoeing these horses, you're only gonna trim out the frog to back third and open them commissores up and fit this shoe supportively with this. These shoes right here, you can use these for several different reasons. Horses with quarter cracks, you can cut out in sections of this shoe and flow to heel, or if he's really sore on both heels, you can cut both heels out and still have support on here, but you're not clogging up or like a pad on this horse. Leather pads on race horses don't work out too well because they float on a deep track. This here will still allow dirt to get on in here because your best traction is dirt against dirt on any horse, especially a race horse. Uh, and here, some no vibe pads that I put on these Kirkhart shoes. Um, I think Kirkhart's coming out with them now with a no vibe, uh, but they're only they're coming more in a. Um, King's plate, like this here where it's rounder, where a tradition shoe is much more straighter here, and like you can't get them, so a lot of the racehorses, I'll put the, the no vibes on myself, drill, rivet, glue, whatever, on them. Um, like that right there, it's a four millimeter toe grab on, on a horse. Uh, turf horses will not use this whatsoever. They're no-toe or XTs. 
and they have a toe clip. When I'm shoeing them, I'll, I'll notch the toe with a half round and set the shoe back in there to allow it to help. Quarter, quarter clips on a lot of race horses I don't, I don't like because the, the quarters are the thinnest part on a horse's foot. So if you use a toe, toe clip and it's sit back in the foot because your toe's the thickest part of your foot and it can take a lot more than any part of the foot. Like I was talking about what hits first, the heel, what hits the hardest is your heel. So why would we want to put more strain and pressure on this back quarter that's already thin and weak? And then, I don't, this ain't a race bar, but it's close enough just to demonstrate. Like for a lot of horses, and a lot of people say you can't run horses in bar shoes. I disagree with that, because they say they can't get the dirt out. But if that horse is properly shod, when that foot's in the air, that dirt's going to come out. And a lot of heel problems that you can't float or, or whatever, you can use an egg bar and distribute the weight, and that'll increase heel growth, you can pull the heels back, you can support the whole limb or foot for whatever reason. Those also increase traction on a wet track. Yep. Because the foot does not sink into the mud nearly as much. Um, the three horses that placed in the Belmont in the last, years ago. last year, the horses that got first, second, third were switched out 10 minutes before the race into egg bars. One had only mud experience running, the other two had never wore egg bars, and they came in first, second, third. So it is a choice, uh, not necessarily often used, but it is a good choice for a deep, wet track. Um, again, a lot of the tracks now are so strict on their regulations, it, it very much limits. Basically, it's going to come down to length of toe grab for, for a lot of the tracks, um, the square toe will ease break over. It's also going to help with horses that have any upper limb problems, any soreness there, or if they're trying to prevent it. Um, basically, I mean, it's a standard plate with just your square toe. Um, they're very popular as well. We do like to use the toe clips. It does help the shoes. It helps with the stability. Um, this is a relatively new shoe that's come out and it will actually, it is permissible on your synthetic tracks that allow a, a low toe grab. They do come all the way down to two millimeter toe grabs. And it does have, you can see that it has a rolled toe on it. It has an aluminum insert. Um, they have created this shoe to somewhat ease breakover, similar to a square toe, but also to provide increased traction coming out of the gate. And this is one of the newer products on the market. They're always bringing new stuff out. Um, like I said, they do have a shoe that actually reduces traction um, on some of the synthetic tracks where you hear that gripping is a problem, there's too much traction. Um, another option is a rim shoe, um, which you know a lot of people believe is gonna increase traction as well. It gets more dirt in there. So a lot of it's a matter of opinion, and actually the most important part, regardless of what shoe you go to, is going to be the balance and the trim on the horse's foot. You can have the greatest shoe, the greatest technology in the world. If the horse is not balanced properly, number one, your shoes aren't going to stay on, and number two, you're not going to get the performance and longevity out of your horse. And of course, in the racing industry, if your horse can't train and run, it's a losing investment, and nobody wants that. So... It's a very important part of shoeing is more than shoe selection. It's being able to get that horse shod for his confirmation if he has any issues and get, get his trim, get him balanced, and, and then get the right shoes on him. We do have a horse with us today that's got some confirmational and gait issues, which we'll be able to kind of move her and point those out. Um, she's not going to be shod with aluminum plates like a racehorse. We use a shoe with a lot more support in her case, but we have been able to keep her sound. She did have some soundness issues before we started shoeing her this way, and it actually took a while to pinpoint where they were. It was thought to be in the hocks. It was thought to be here and there, but it's a very good point that a horse's soreness even if it comes from the feet, is not necessarily simply a shoeing issue. It does affect the entire horse. This horse was very sore in the shoulder, very sore in the hip, stifle. So it's very important that this be done right, in addition to a lot of the other uh, methods of care out there. So we'll be able to see her move and be able to see her shoeing and how it impacts the way that she moves.
What this mare does, back her up, hum. All right, that's good. Now bring her. Now as you watch this mare walk, bring her on. I'll see if anybody can catch what she's doing. Can y'all see what the mare's doing when she's walking? Did y'all catch it? Toe hitting first? The mare hits the outside and rolls to the inside. Oh. She does this. Okay, doing? yes. And what that does, it's where it's on the very bottom she's doing it, it made her very sore, plumb above the withers. All right, that's good, hon. And then if you look at her confirmation, it's like somebody took a pipe wrench to her knees and cranked her out. Now watch, see how she's hitting? Hits the outside and falls to the inside. Okay, we're gonna stop that. Okay, now back her, back her up again. Now, if the mare has enough foot on her, you normally don't have to do this on the white foot because I can trim it out. Okay, where she ain't been done in a while, I'm gonna have to, to do her also on the other foot. All right, that's good. Now watch your white foot as it comes. And look at the knees. The knees are not right in front of us, the knees are offset. See, she's hitting the outside from the inside, even on the white foot, because her, her confirmation. If you look at this mare, she's turned out the knees She's too straight-legged in the back, and, she, and she's coming up. She's got a long back. So a horse with a long back and that leg conformation, nine times out of 10, if they're sore in the back, they're gonna be sore back stifle and hock. It goes hand in hand. So the best way to shoot this mare in the back, the shorter you can get a toe and a trailer on her to pull her out, so just kind of widen her out just a little bit with plenty of support. Because when she walks, she wants to torque in the back a little bit. But if you take a lot of torque out on some horses, they're gonna get sore because they have to have that, but this mare doesn't need that. This mare goes better if she doesn't torque. Now watch when she goes in the back. See how she's wanting to twist out? I mean, you're, it's not gonna be tremendously like this, but the mare is doing this, okay? You take this time it travels five feet. I mean, that's a lot of torque on everything. You can see it plain as day as that mare's coming down here. She stands towed out, she's turning to knee, she's hitting on the outside, flopping in. The way I shoot this mare, she's been running pose for five or six years. She stayed sound. Anybody, a lot of other people wouldn't catch it. The mare's career would already been over. And you, you can see how she hits to the outside on the outside foot while the hoof wall is shorter and the inside is longer because she, she's beaten down on that outside foot. It's taking the, the, the strain of the, the, of the hitting. So we're gonna do what we can to, to get her fixed up. As a running bred horse, um, she does show some confirmation similarities that we see a lot in the thoroughbreds and on the track. Um, to be shod with just a pair of shoes stuck on there, she would become lame um, in the shoulder in the stifle, in the hips. Um, she does get the benefit of chiropractic and she's had ac acupuncture, but that's only gonna provide a temporary relief unless you actually address the source of the problem, which is how she moves. And ask a horse to perform that's not moving properly, you're putting increased stress on that horse and it will lead to long-term soundness issues. Um, this mare performs at a very, very high level, but she must be properly shot. You'll notice that we do hot shoe her. Um, usually, of course, aluminum, the racehorses aren't shot hot. Um, a horse that does have a lot of foot problems, that's extremely out of balance, or a horse that loses its shoes frequently, or a horse that has actually pulled the shoe off in a lot of the hoof wall, we can actually hot seat them with a steel shoe and then apply the aluminum racing plate. It gives a very, very good secure surface for the shoe. Um, 
basically it's molding the shoe and the foot together. So that's an option that we do have and have used on horses with troubled feet and it's very, very successful. Because she's been turned out for a while and she does not have a lot of foot, um, the leather is gonna be, it's actually tapered to a specific amount that she needs where we saw her hitting to the outside and rolling to the inside. It's actually going to have her land flat and that's the purpose of it. When she has enough foot on the left front, we're actually able, we can trim her in such a way as to achieve the same thing. The other one almost always needs some degree of, of a small leather wedge. Um, this one's gonna have to have it as well, being that there's not a lot of foot, but a lot of it we can do with enough foot in the trim, but that's the purpose of it. It's going to stop this, which is of course gonna torque her entire limb and help her to land flat. Um, the grandsire of this mare was a horse that ran the fastest time trial in qualifying for the All-American Futurity. So she's very much has running in her blood and does, does enjoy doing so. <laughs> we do a lot of therapeutic shoeing. Um, we have an endurance horse that was actually turned out because she could not successfully pass the veterinary exam or complete the ride. Uh, we've been shoeing her for about six months now and Brenda very happily gave us this photo of her. Um, she's won an endurance competition. She's gotten a second and a third and I believe she's also completed a hundred mile race which is pretty good for a mare that last year could not pass at all. Um, so she's tickled to death with her. She does have shoes which I'm sure are quite a conversation piece at the event but um, she's doing very well with them. Um, we have another one that we do that was kind of in the same situation and she actually competes in aluminum bar shoes and he's gotten third with her in a 60 mile race, um, which before he wasn't able to place with her either. So we're tickled to death with those and, and that's kind of a lot of our, um, our specialty is performance horses, race horses and, and the therapeutic work. But there's our finished product, how I got that in my safety all the way around. Only really three reasons you ever shoe a horse is correction, protection, and traction. It's the only three reasons a horse are ever shot. And the worst thing you could ever do to a horse's foot is drive a nail in it. Mustang horses that never get foot care have the most perfect foot. For the most part, them have a perfect foot. They'll have a little bit more war dorsal wall on their toe but they're wearing it off. The reason we have so much trouble on horses in stables, show barns, is because they're not wearing off what they're growing. And a horse standing in a barn is not getting the circulation in the feet to, to make hoof growth. A foot growth with circulation through the coffin bone because it's a, it's a coarse bone. It looks like a lava rock. It, it, it's pitted. Blood goes in, goes out, and there's two, two arteries that run inside that coffin bone. That, that carries uh, two main arteries that th through there. So if a horse is not out running in, in, in a field and stuff, you're not getting blood circulation, so they're not gonna grow as fast. And then you take big halter horses that weigh 1,500 pounds on a double lot foot, they're just squishing their, their feet off. They're squishing the blood supply. They're just too big on a little foot, and that's where you get navicular problems. And they're saying that that's caused the vascular systems uh, even when they're young. That's where you get a lot of these problems at. A very interesting thing that I like to talk about on, on a race horse or any horse is, is Chris Beamer always preached to me that a long heel is a weak heel and you see a lot of toes shoved forward and a lot of heels brought forward on these horses because they're not gathering this foot up and pulling them heels back to the widest point. And they're, and they're not balancing these horses. And that's why we're ending up with a lot of heel pain, a lot of quarter cracks, shoved up bulbs, um, lateral cartilages that are sore because the heel hits first, the heel hits the hardest. And if we don't support these horses, then we're not helping them. And a lot of times I'll see horses that the, that the heel of the shoe is stopping plumb to here. And that, that's just not supporting that horse. 
If anything, we need to go further back with these shoes and wider. Well, that's a good question. What makes the shoe stay on there? Um, generally speaking, the shoes stay on there with nails. Um, we use actually a five slim for her, but most racehorses are going to use a three and a half or four race nail, um, which I can show you a couple. Uh, but horses that have no hoof wall or some therapeutic issues or an extreme soreness that you can't nail to, there is always the option of glue-ons, which work very, very well as well. Um, so that, that's kind of your two options. They do have a couple different styles of glue-ons. You can just glue on the aluminum racing shoes. You can also use a shoe with a cuff that comes up around the outside of the hoof wall and glues on. Um, so there's a number of different options in that department just depending on the horse's needs and, you know, what the, what the trainer wants to do with them. Um, we glue on quite a few shoes. Um, it's a little bit more in the care department. So it's not something we do in a lot of cases of um, horses that aren't performing, um, horses that tear off foot wall. There's, there's a lot of options as far as the glue-ons, but basically you're either going to glue it or nail it, um, unless you go with like the plastic boots and stuff, and that's not going to go for a racehorse. You're not going to have the traction and stuff that you need. Like I said, we use a five slim blade in the SX-8s because of the, the size and the body of the shoe, and... She doesn't have a whole lot of extra foot right now, so um, the slim blade's a little bit rounder and it's not quite as thick, so it, it's gonna, it works well when horses have a little bit of a lack of foot wall. The clips also help the shoe with stability. The general, the general motto is, is that a clip is worth two nails. So she's got three nails on each side and two clips, so um, they're, they're gonna be pretty secure. And like I said before, being able to hot seat them really gives it an ideal surface for the shoe to be on. Um, so we don't lose, and horses that we've been doing for some time, we hardly ever lose shoes. In fact, a lot of times when I take shoes off that he's put on, it's kind of a chore. So um, the biggest reason that you see a lot of horses losing shoes, other than being overdue, is going to be the horse's fit wasn't balanced to start with. The trim was not balanced. If, if it's not balanced, it's going to put more stress on one side and one set of nails than the other, and eventually it's going to come off. If, you're, if your foot is not level and balanced, if it's like this, then, then you're pulling on that side, you're pulling on those nails, and eventually it, the, the foot or the nails are going to give out, and you'll lose shoes. We were discussing nails, and this is actually what we're using on her. This is a five slim blade nail. Um, and just to kind of show you the difference, this is a three and a half race nail. Obviously, the aluminum plates are a lot smaller and lighter than what we're putting on her right now. Um, and then we also do, you know, make sure that our clinches are, are cut very small. In the event the horse should step on itself, or have any issues where it's going to pull the shoe off, the shoe will come off clean. It will not interfere with the horse. It will not cause injury, and it will not cause damage to the hoof wall.
Now see how that horse is hitting flat? But it's not flat. Her balance is here. That's her balance. That's where she needs to be. If you shot a regular a horse that didn't have this confirmation like that, you'd cripple it. But her, that's where she needs to be. Back her up again, let him see. Okay. There we go. Bill asked an interesting question, and we hear this in the public a lot, and that is the question, uh, do the shoes and what we do hurt the horse? No, it doesn't if you do it right. <laughs> it's not to say, I mean, I've had horses shot in the past that could not walk afterwards, um, but a skilled farrier, no. It's like your fingernails, and for women that have ever had acrylics or anything, they use the little Dremel on them, and if they go too far, it's going to get a little warm and not feel particularly good, but for the most part, it's, it's very similar to the material in your fingernails, and it's a whole lot thicker. Um, the shoes, there is a point at which they would be too hot to use, and obviously, you don't want to just lay it on there and burn down as far as you can go. But done properly, no, it does not hurt. The nails are actually into the hoof wall. If you do quick the horse, it's going to hurt. Um, it happens occasionally, more than likely, in a foot with very, very poor condition or a horse that's very, very difficult. Um, other than that, there again, it's going to be something that is a result of not being done properly. But no, it doesn't hurt. Um, she's actually much more comfortable with her corrective shoes on, and we have a lot of horses like that. Um, we also have a horse that's very, very tender-footed, and these horses all need and like the protection of the shoes they have. Obviously, if we were hurting her, <laughs> she wouldn't have stood there like that. Um, but no, I mean, the, the basic answer is if it's done correctly, no. And if it is hurting the horse, then the horse has either got an underlying issue. And sometimes we are asked to shoe a horse that does have a soreness or a lameness somewhere in the horse. And we actually need to stop and find that and sometimes call in a vet or a chiropractor or somebody else to investigate and to treat it further. Some horses that are recovering from injury, we actually do shoe with the vet present. We can nerve block them or sedate them or just enable them to be comfortable enough to put shoes on that are going to help um, further heal their, their injury or problems. So, it, I mean, that's the simple answer is no, but uh, we do run in doing the therapeutic work. We run into a lot of horses that are in a lot of pain, and we, we do manage that. If it's a horse that cannot stand for some reason, then we're going to call the vet in. We're going to call in whatever professional we need to have in so that we can help the horse because the horse is going to need his therapeutic shoes. But sometimes they just they can't stand there and take that, and that's another reason for using blue ones. Some horses with certain injuries or conditions or sorenesses are not going to take having their feet banged on um, with nail-on shoes. So those are glued on because it's a lot less trauma for horses that are already sore. And of course, Farley's Barrier Service and Talk of the Track would also like to thank Joe Police, the Executive Director of the Kentucky Horseshoeing School, for volunteering the use of his facility so that we had all of our, our classroom and indoor resources um, at our disposal, um, and we all enjoy putting together educational segments for you.